Hi, I'm DM Fitzgerald. I'm the creator of the Mapur Adventure. I'd like to thank all of you that have liked and subscribed to give us a boost. If you haven't liked or subscribed, please consider it. We could definitely use the help to the site. And now, let's roll the tape. When we last left our intrepid adventurers, they're on a secret mission to the Elvish Kingdom. On the way, they found deserted villages and a deserted Sheesh encampment. Sheesh are the world's version of orcs. There is something shadowing them in the forest. When Garu throws a spell at it, the spell is sent flying back at him. Now, there is something big moving through the forest ahead of them, along with the horned figure. The woman with horns yells something in a language that no one can understand except for Garu. It sounds like the root of her language is Elvish, but he doesn't understand what she's saying. He yells back to her with an Elvish greeting. Her eyes grow wide, and the giant creature comes closer to them. It's like several trees melded together and the top of it is a nest of tentacles the size of a man moving to and fro. The party forms up with Morgan, Scala and Finn in the back. The creature roars and charges towards them. Huge tentacles on the thing push Brock aside as if he was nothing but he lands on his feet. Marcus sees an opening and chops at the monster. It seems very dense, and his blade has little effect. Garu loses two arrows, one after another, and they seem to have absolutely no effect. Then Mercy strikes the beast with his two-handed mace. It just seems to bounce off. Scala aims a spell above their heads, setting the tops of the monster on fire, and Morgan speaks some words of the goddess Chalicea, and a wall of power rises up between the fighters and the beast thing. The thing rages at being kept from the characters. Marcus realigns himself for another attack, and Mercy mumbles a curse about errant druids and stands next to Marcus waiting. But suddenly, the beast screams a challenge and then turns and moving much faster than it looks like it should be able to, the creature runs off the other direction, trailing a smoky plume of tentacles as it goes. Brock grimaces and says that they could have taken the creature. Marcus says there was no reason to follow it and fight it if it's not attacking them. Brock shrugs in agreement and they decide to continue their travels in a slightly different direction. As they walk along, Marcus comes back up and walks with Morgan. He inquires if she has any idea what's going on. Morgan says that it appears there's been another war going on here that they weren't aware of. She says that normally she would look to the woman for help in their endeavor but she says that this time they need to involve as few people as they possibly can. Marcus inquires if she's had a vision from the Lady Chaldasea. She gives a slight nod. It was brief and jumbled, and she needs more time to puzzle it out. Finn joins them and mentions that he's very sorry he froze in combat. Marcus tossles the troubadour's hair and says it was nothing. It can happen to anybody. Finn seems placated by the paladin's words, and they continue on. Garu mentions later that they've been hiding slightly away from the river, and maybe they should correct their course as soon as possible. They make camp 
and endeavor to get closer to the river tomorrow. Then they set watches. Scala and Finn draw the first watch. They watch quietly for a while. Finn breaks the silence. He whispers that he has a question for her. She asks, well, what does he want to ask? While she continues to peer out into the darkness, Finn says that he wishes the honor of writing a song about her. She smiles and says that she is too flawed a person to have a song written about her. Finn answers that all the good songs are written about flawed people, but usually the flawed person isn't as pretty as she is. Scala looks at him and asks what this is all about. Finn tells her that he's always had great affection for her, but their stations are so different that there would be no way of anything to come of it. Now, now that she's going to the Elvish lands, they may never see each other again. He needed to speak his feelings to her. Scala blushes, but it's hidden by the night. They finish up the watch, both grinning at each other. <laughs>